this is Texas Tony Tiger again from YouTube and I'm here to talk to you about uh, breeding rats and uh, just uh, this morning I found out that one of my other females that was really really pregnant like her stomach was way out past her side that she gave birth to a large litter just sometime maybe like really really early this morning like before dawn but uh she gave birth to to um, 18 ratlets or pinkies. It was what they're called about right now. 18 babies. Now that is a large litter. She's about like medium to large size rat, so she's probably about you know a good size though. But um, usually I like, kind of like to have a, a large litter that big because you know it's more work for the mom and it's a lot more mouths to feed in. Usually with a larger litter like that, usually a few of them tend to die because some, some get separated from the to the strongest. Because usually the stronger pups are feeding, you know, constantly, kind of like push over the other ones and they end up not eating that much food or they can get injuries, you know, other stuff like that. But uh, I breed rats for reasons. One is to, uh, for business, it also helps kind of like support the, my breeders, you know, like trade stuff from like rat accessories, you know, some rat food or something. But last time I traded some some, some of the babies, like a uh, to a pet shop, and then they gave me some stuff. Like I might just sell them for like a dollar each to them, because they probably might turn around and sell them for like five times as much though. But it's, it's not I don't really care about that though. But um, I have one rat. She is a uh, wavy haired uh, a gooty cat, white. Basically, uh, she has a really weird uh, fur type. She looks like, she, from at a glance, she looks like she is wired hair, almost like a like a wavy wire hair look. But uh, she, she's she's an okay rat. Like um, her name's Cookie. She she kind of like belongs to my little sister, and uh, she, she's not really aggressive. I mean, you can pet her though, but sometimes they get kind of they kind of like freak out and they might turn to sniff you and I'm afraid to let them sniff me because I'm afraid they might bite me or something. But uh, another one, which is one I had a large litter, her name's Toto. She is a black Berkshire with white feet and the white stomach. She was aggressive last litter. She did think, nick me twice on the thumb. I mean, you can't see it now, but she nicked me really good on the tip of my thumb and she also bit part of the nail too because, you know, like their mouths are like that, the teeth. But, uh, she got me right through the window of her house. I was just, um, trying to put some grass into her house because, you know, like rats, they like to eat some of that too. That's how, they also eat that too out in the wild. They eat any vegetation they can get. But, uh, they're pretty good rats. Um, you know, I can understand why she got, she got mad at me and probably bit me because, you know, like, some females, they are very protective, some aren't, you know, like, I had another one that, uh, was killed during a storm from flooding that uh, sh she didn't mind about me touching the babies or touching her at all. Like she always enjoyed me having me around though. But um, another one I have is a new one. I got her when she was at the end of her pregnancy, and she she has had her babies for a while now. She's they're about um, I'm assuming around two weeks old because they just now like this is the second day they had their eyes open. So pretty much, yeah. And uh, her litter at the beginning, I think, was about 10 or 11, which is like probably about a couple more than the average size, but 10 is usually like the average for me. I even had a litter where there was just two babies, and that was a surprise litter, because, you know, with two babies, you don't see a stomach hardly at all. And she wasn't, like, uh, eating a lot or not that I noticed. But uh, basically, like, another one that I have, he's a, a Gucci brown male. You know, he also has like a white, he is all, I think he's also a Berkshire, Berkshire brown or Gucci, because he has like white feet, basically, yes, he's Berkshire too. He's a tame rat, he has like that wild rat, you know, type of color, which is the Gucci part, and uh, he's a pretty nice male, I mean, like, right now he's by himself in the cage, because uh, on the other cages, they have female, pregnant females, or not pregnant, um, females with babies, and you know, you can't have a male with a female who has a litter, because he, uh, it's for his protection, because he can, he, he has gotten attacked before, because I, 
I tried to uh, test it out, which, but he didn't get hurt. It was just kind of like, you know, just stay away from my litter kind of thing. Where they kind of like, you know, they kind of like put their hands up like they're about to attack or something. But uh, he, is, he means no harm to the babies, you know, like, they're his, all, they're all his babies except for the new female that I got, the recent one, which I got her when she was, like, almost ready to pop. But, uh, his name is Manny, that's, that's the name that my little sister gave mine, so. He's a pretty good rat, the babies are very sweet, too. And I have two other females, they're, uh, they're young, but, um. Their names are Halsey and Lucky. They're pretty sweet, you know. Like those are the only two that I like to play. With. Like I also like to give them a lot of attention to. They're still kind of young. They're just before their good, good size breeding age. I guess the good breeding age is like six to twelve months. That's when they get their peak, I guess. Right in the rat books. I also have a book I just got to today that's called My Rat by Gerd Lodwin. I think is what that last name is. It's a really good book. I mean, I can show you here in a little bit, though, but I can't get up right now. But um, anyway, it, it's really easy to, to keep rats outside. Like the problem I had earlier is that um, it rained real bad yesterday evening. You know, for people who live in South Texas, pretty much yesterday, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, as long as the uh, any advisories, like weather advisories, taking effect, you know, like my parents will let me bring, even bring the rat cages into the garage because you don't want to because the garage can actually get hotter than outside or in the house because of the, you know, the cement concrete everywhere on the walls and uh, so if you have walls and like on the floor, it gets very thermal in there. It doesn't have air conditioning at all or circulating air, so, but uh, pretty much the winter time is... It's fairly easy, you know, like, uh, it's easy on the rats because they, it doesn't get very humid out there to where it starts stirring up a lot of that ammonia they put off. But the uh, only thing it's taking effect for, taking account for during the winter time with outdoor rats is, uh, sh shredded paper. I use that all the time and they like it and also you can get some other stuff that, uh, the pet stores that they let you do is make mess stuff out of. The important thing is to... To have prop housing, like you don't want to have a house that's going to have like a bunch of holes in it to let cold air in. So, you know, they, they like to like pretty much the mo they're most active during the night, rats outside, especially because you know they're they're used to the uh, natural sunlight. You know, when it gets cold or it gets dark, they come out that time period. That's, that's also a time period the, preg the pregnant or uh, you know, females of the babies is pretty much the time they spend a lot out out eating out of the nest and uh, I have one female too that the one that I got that's pregnant her she had she had like a lot of problems just before like a, like last week when the baby's only like a few days old she wasn't like eating that much she still had, she's still like she's like getting up there with the food and stuff but uh she still needs to eat a little bit more like her insides are like her sides are kind of like gaped in a little bit but uh She's still eating and drinking, but I think it's not, she's supposed to be eating a little bit more, because she's, uh, her babies are still, like, relying on her to suckle, and to, for, the, for feed, too. Uh, the, her babies are doing good, she only has three out of ten, because, you know, I had to have reptiles that, one especially that is a carnivore, he eats some babies, too. But, uh, they're pretty good pets outside, you know. Like, I just don't like having a male by himself because they're very social animals. For, you know, I'm pretty sure that anybody who's watched this video has to own at least a rat or something. Or a family member that does. And yes, um, it's good to have uh, more than one rat in each cage. I highly recommend it, especially during the winter time. That's when it gets cold. Like, usually rats that, uh, probably yeah, I prefer that to have more than one because, uh, you know, thermal body heat, like, it, Imagine yourself in a tent in the middle of Antarctica, like, just by yourself. You would be a lot colder than with somebody with you to share that body heat, you know? But uh, as long as that they have, that their water bottle is very, you know, steady, that it's not rocky or anything to work and fall over during the uh, summer months, especially if you live in a hot area, like in a desert, like in Phoenix or over in California or 